Hey everybody, today is Friday the 18th of January 2013 and this is Brian Shannon from AlphaTrends.net speaking. Let's take a look at these markets here. We had a uh, good week for the S&P 500. We were up, uh, let's take a look at the numbers here. We are up uh, just under a percentage point. Interestingly, the NASDAQ was down. We'll talk about that in a moment. The Russell 2000 continues to outperform as it was up about 1.5%. And you can see we had pretty much positive markets throughout the week. So when we take a look at the S&P 500, what we were talking about last Friday was that we would want to give the benefit of the doubt to the buyers as long as we remained above 146. It's interesting to me that I get a lot of emails from people that are looking for reasons to get short up in here when we have a clear uptrend. Basically, you know, you can look at the market and say it's up too much or, you know, you're uncomfortable with the amount that it's up or based on the debt ceiling or whatever the, the news is that drives the fear of holding stocks in an uptrend. But basically, the way you want to look at it is you know picking a top is almost impossible in my opinion or a bottom um, we want to look for the evidence that you know if the market had broken down below this 146 level this week then we would have gotten cautious and said well the next level of potential support was down close to about 145 and if we had kind of gone like this and then broken down well then we would have a much different picture instead the picture we continue to have is a market that makes higher highs and higher lows and digest the gains through time Time rather than price. Next week, what we're going to be looking for in the S&P 500 is for this market to hold up above 147. If it can continue to hold above 147, then the market remains innocent till proven guilty. There's no reason to think that there's a, going to be an ultimate top made up in here. We took out last year's high, and that also put us at uh, levels not seen since uh, late 2007. The next uh, you know, level of interest that would be up near about 153. That is, that's where the market looks like it could have the potential to rally up towards. Um, we had taken this bigger level out, obviously, a while ago, and we're holding above it at this point. And the daily chart, again, we have the this you know nice pattern of higher highs and higher lows. So we want to see about 147 hold in the S&P 500, and until it breaks down below that, and we have a flat to declining five-day moving average, then the intermediate-term trend is going to be. Uh, remain higher. NASDAQ was down slightly for the week and we can take a look at that here. We had seen uh, you know five days ago the market closed right up there so right near the high end of that range and this week we broke above that level of resistance briefly and then came back down. Now that is a little bit of reason not to be bearish but for concern. The fact is though we do remain above the key levels of support. We were talking about 6650 being key for this week. We spent just a few moments below $66.50, um, but the bigger level down at 66.10. So this is our band of support that we want to see hold. This is the low end of the, the support. And now what we're seeing is that this is what we're going to consider the high end uh, where, where the resistance is. So next week, a clean break above and then to hold uh, above 67.50. I think that uh, we will see the NASDAQ continue to move higher and probably head up at least towards uh, this level here of about 68.5. Why was the NASDAQ down? Well, obviously, uh, hopefully you realize, you know, the Apple has the, the biggest weighting in the NASDAQ 100, and that broke down. We'll talk more about that in a moment, and there was a uh, video I did Thursday evening about uh, Apple on uh, alphatrends.net. But let's take a look at this action and see what the potential uh, problem would be of breaking beyond that resistance and then pulling back. This is actually the exact scenario that I was hoping for Thursday night, that is, that we would break beyond this range and then pull back and kind of hold above the midpoint of the of the range. So really, I think that 66.50 down to 66.10, as long as we remain above that, then we're neutral within the intermediate term, but within the context of an overall bigger bullish picture so that we give the benefit of the doubt to the buyers. Now, of course, we have earnings coming out next week for a lot of uh, stocks, and that'll continue really for the next three weeks that we have the, uh, the, the large number of earnings being released and hopefully one or two stocks won't uh dramatically affect the overall market, but Apple does have that potential as they report on Wednesday after the close. Uh, that is to have a big effect on the NASDAQ. But as long as we remain above 66.10 to 66.50 band of support, this market's innocent till proven guilty and you give the benefit of the doubt to the buyers. Selling short up here, you might get lucky, you might pick a, a top, but to me, the, the odds are, you know, we're in an uptrend and the you know the markets have been uh, rallying, so you, pick, you, you better 
better off going with the flow. Now, um, by the way, Real Tick is the sponsor of this show each Friday, and I mention them because uh, they're the sponsors and because I use them each and every day in my trading and in my analysis. That's the charts that we look at here, so take a look at them. Um, anyways, let's take a look at the Russell 2000. Again, it, it is up the most for the uh, year here, um, and we continue to see that, uh, you know, the, the the gains were being digested more through time uh, as we had pretty tight ranges but higher lows. We briefly got below the, what we thought was the key level for this week of 87. We got below that just on the open on Tuesday, I think that was, and then from there continued to ramp higher. So we have a market that's making higher highs and higher lows above a rising five-day moving average. So we held that 87 level, and that 87 is an important level of, of, uh, of prior uh, of support that we want to continue to see hold um, nearer term next week maybe about 88 I'm sorry 87 75 um, that would be our you know kind of where the light turns yellow uh, basically we've got a green light here we've got higher highs and higher lows above every moving average and now if we break down to 87.75, we want to get a little bit cautious. Then if we break down into the 87, we have to look at this market and say, well, is it now going to pull back a little bit deeper? We haven't really had a, a deep pullback at all. So those are the key levels. But until the market actually breaks uh, the pattern of higher highs and higher lows on the intraday time frames, you have to remain bullish. But be, uh, be prudent about taking risks and not being a buyer after these types of rallies. We saw that buyers in the semiconductors on um, on Thursday got burned. Uh, what we were talking about in here last Friday was, you know, it seemed likely that the market was going to break beyond this 34 level and th that the ideal scenario would be for a break of 34 and then uh, to rally up maybe towards about 34 and a half um, on its way towards 35 and change. But to pull, to break out and then pull back and see that re resistance hold his support. Well, that's that's pretty much what we saw today thanks to uh, Intel that we saw that the market made actually today's low was uh, 33.98 so we're within this band of support that I think is we want to see hold is about 33.85 to 34 next week we want to see the semiconductors hold that but it's good to see uh, that Intel which is really you know it's 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 a damaged stock to begin with and people who bought Intel uh, late Thursday you have to ask yourself again the question of where has the market recently come from and where does it have the potential to go before it's likely to encounter resistance or source of supply. Well, that source of supply was this prior support, which did in fact turn into resistance. People got excited about it before the earnings, but then the earnings came out and uh, we saw the stock uh, get hit hard and close pretty much near the lows today. So I think Intel remains dead money. It's in a longer term still, you know, maybe finding some support in here, but if they didn't scare you out, they'll wear you out in here so I don't see any reason to be an owner of, of uh, Intel but the main point here is that the semiconductors hold up if we break below and hold below 34 then it looks like another test of about $33.30 the financial stocks were uh, up slightly this week as well they continue to have a, a real nice uh, relative strength and, and just kind of grind higher in here we um, you know the we are at multi-year highs that is since uh, the financial Financial crisis basically if you look at this there wasn't a whole lot of volume that traded uh, up towards about 19 and it seems as though that the market eventually can you know find its way up to that $19 level but we have to you know look at it and say on a shorter to intermediate term basis what are the key levels well this week we saw um, last week what we were looking for was a uh, the, for the market to hold above 1685 to uh, to 1690 it did in fact do that so it held the support that we were looking for and I think that next week that uh, about 1695 is going to be the key level for uh, the financials to hold above that that is, we want to give the intermediate term benefit of the doubt to the buyers as long as 1695-ish holds. And if we can do that, then uh, there's no reason to be looking for selling, you know, for selling these things short. Um, 
let's take a look at uh, Apple because uh, it is you know at a, uh, a key place last week I was saying that you know that, that the that the rallies seem to be getting sold we're getting more repeated tests of this support and a, te a break of the support seemed likely um, unfortunately it occurred on a gap on Monday morning so there wasn't an opportunity to put, put a good trade on in there uh, you know these bigger levels still uh, hold weight uh, down near about 465 earnings are due on Wednesday for Apple and we're at a point where this prior support in here, this little band of support, is now looking to, to potentially be resistant. So from 505 up to 515, and we uh, broke into there uh, briefly. If it can get above and hold above 515, then perhaps the worst is over for Apple. However, you know what I would prefer to see, and, and this is going to sound bad to some people, but I think the better scenario is that, uh, that uh, Apple says something that they miss their earnings or says something that spooks people and the stock gaps down towards that 455 465 area and don't forget again that 420 is a big level as well so I'd rather see it, it bleed out uh, but you know I'm not gonna bet based on that um, I think that there's plenty of opportunity without taking the risk of uh, betting on earnings basically after the fact that there'll be plenty of volatility in Apple and to, to make a bet is just doing that making a bet I hope everyone has a, a good long weekend if you have some extra time take a look at alphatrends.net sign up for a free trial and uh, see what's going on there because there's a lot of satisfied uh, subscribers and I think I can help you become a better trader as well and bring you some good uh, trading ideas each and every day. That's what we do. We've got a chat room as well. So uh, thanks for tuning in. And again, enjoy your long weekend.